Good evening and a very warm welcome to the DXTL Grassroots Podcast Show with KCC 99.8 FM. Welcome. This is one of our first shows and we've got the rod in the studio, as no doubt you can see. But if you're just listening, you can't see because we have our camera work going on DXTL TV from the touchlands. Anyway, to all our new listeners, thank you very, very much for tuning in. I know you're all waiting for grassroots stories and we're going to have a little bit of banter tonight. We're going to talk about a few good old times when we were in with Don't Cross the Line and also we're going to talk about updates over what happened over the weekend with the grassroots football. Um, Well, Rudd, welcome to the show. Anyway, not a crumb picked up after you. Thanks, Mal. How are you anyway? I'm okay, thank you very much. So what have you been up to over the weekend? Uh, Well, Going out looking at a bit of um, young young adults um, learning the game from the middle. So, you know, seeing how they would pick Referees. up. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Brilliant. Also, some of them are coaches as well. They're um, learning the train from obviously maybe the dads or their uncles on the, on the sidelines. Like, but no, it's, it's looking promising in the area, right? Yeah, especially the, ki- the kids who well, want to get involved. It's good because we did have a discussion off air just a little bit. A while ago, we we're going to try and do a COVID nineteen free show, where we, yeah. uh, because everyone's fed up with it. We're fed up with it. You, but you can't do a show now, um, nowadays with COVID nineteen and the regulations. Um, we can't talk about grassroots football because of the regulations and the social distancing and where people wearing masks. It's just the end thing at the moment, and it really is annoying. Annoying, yeah. but unfortunately, Paul, as you said, you saw it out and about. I saw it out and about, but I'll tell you what, the weekend was absolutely fantastic for grassroots football. Oh yeah, no rain, that's, the, that's, the, that, that's, that's basically a good weekend, no rain, don't mind if it's cold because you can wrap up. It was mild and yeah. I, unfortunately folks, if you were waiting for me at the Jeffrey Humble on a Friday evening or Saturday, Paul you know I've had loads to do. No, you had a better offer, you went for a meal, come on, tell the viewers the truth. I did not have a better <laughs> meal, I mean I, I didn't go for a meal, <laughs> no definitely did not go for a meal. Um, I was just busy, I, yeah. you know yourself, with cook kits. What do you think of the kits that we done for Mags Ajax? It was great, especially done winning. Yeah, ball three. Yeah. I know, because the playing does what they do, so you done the kit. Yeah. It was you jinxed but the respect, I think... No, it, it, sets, yeah, it sets out, looking at it from the, a photograph's point of view, and then obviously close up, but close up, yeah, it, it is spot on. And I know Wayne it. was telling me that um, the referees were making a point of noticing that, and they were made up with it, you know, thumbs up to um, whoever's done the kits for them, like, but uh, no, Wayne, I appreciate the order. DXTL Sports, yeah. we took over that, and um, obviously we're going to be doing a lot more kits and a lot more logos. And I know you're waiting for your top, aren't you, Paul? We're, we're getting the I've been waiting since day one, well, for my These are the new studio tops we've been talking about, but I am designing them, I am sending the logos off, we're getting them designed, and we may just go um, for a very pale blue, sky blue t-shirts for the studio, yeah. what do you reckon? Yeah, I think so, yeah. With the logos, I think it'll stand out, especially the Respect logo, yeah. and don't cross the line. What, so, what about any um, rain jackets, man? No, no for the winter? It's not going to rain in here, I think we're going to be... I don't rain in here, you know. Oh, oh right, <laughs> okay. Um, well, I hope it's not going to rain in here, anyway, <laughs> don't jinx us. No, um, I haven't even looked at rain jackets, maybe, yeah. Um, at least then people on the line will know who we are. Well, what about us getting KCC Live 99.8 to sponsor us with rain jackets? Do you think they would? Dan, there's no come on, Dan. To, there's no harm in asking. There's there? no harm in asking. You can only say yes. <laughs> 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 we don't accept no. That's right. No, but anyway, yeah, the new, um, we are designing them. The new, new uniforms, should we say, and I think I'm looking forward to them. Um, yeah, you, look, you look proper. You look. You look more of a team. You look more of a unit when you're actually wearing the uniform. Even the, even in the studio. Even the referees. Yeah. Now I've noticed one or two referees, and I have been telling one or two referees. It is sometimes it gets a bit chilly, but um, you've got female le- referees, and you've got the kids in kits, and some of the younger lads, and maybe some of the experienced lads as well, with the hoods up, hats on, gloves on. You mm. can't really grip. You can't. You can't um, really grip with wearing gloves. But unless you're actually wearing the dead thin ones, which a lot of the runners wear, 
which uh, you can, they, their idea wouldn't wear a normal pair of I know the county FAs, they like the referees to wear their kits if they've got it with the county FA badge and the FA badge. They like to be the, a look immaculate. As you just said there, you do look smart yeah. in a kit and that's why you see the managers with their coaching coats on and the kids are all in their kits looking immaculate. Um, one or two referees, just a reminder to referees as well because this is a message not just from me, this will come from your county FAs as well. They like to see you put your thermals underneath if you're cold. That's what they yeah. say, isn't it? Put your thermals underneath, go out there and referee because the kids are in their kits as well. So you have to set a prime example. Surely if it's cold, you could the county FAs would allow you to wear a woolly hat as long as it's not a hood. Oh, yeah. allow me to wear one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, you're different though, aren't you? Oh, well, you just say, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know, but you're running around, but you are running around, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, um, we used to play years, well, not so long ago, me, you know what I mean? I was under 10s or something like that, uh, playing me football, and, and you used to sweat a lot, you know, when it was cold. Yeah. You run, you were burning, no football's a little bit different now, but you still have to keep your eye on the, the kids, especially the goalkeeper, if it is cold, because yeah. um, you, you've got to make sure that every kid is involved in playing the game, not telling you how to suck ex managers by the way, but even the parents, mums and dads, watch the players if it is a cold day, you know, because that's got to come in, because winter is on its way. I feel for the, like, when you look at these kits now, when you go and buy the kits, um, like the goalkeeping kits, they're not what they used to be, you know, padded arms and padded shorts and everything, the, their arms aren't even padded now. They're all thin kits aren't they, yeah. I must admit, you know, yeah. but... And the shorts for the tops? I've noticed a lot of short sleeve top tops, as well as the referees as well. Everyone's gone short sleeve. I'm in the studio here, and I've got long sleeves on. But you know, you, if you don't feel the cold, by all means, we'll wear the the uh, short sleeves. But um, we are preparing everyone for the winter. Be and, and fingers crossed, the games will go on without any COVID nineteen stoppages. Well, if, they're on, if they're in the hubs, surely they shouldn't be stopped. Should they? The, the types of pitches that are actually in these hubs. Well, are they? You know, because people say they never st stop now. If you've got three foot of snow, I get the nuts. Yeah, well, yeah, well the thing, yeah. so they're not all weather really, are they? You know, because uh, we, we have that. It hasn't been stopped yet. And I'm not praying for snow or anything. I'm definitely not, because we just want to see football week in, week out. Because there's, yeah. And I want to see parents. I want to see... I, I know people, there was referees, a couple of referees pulled me the other day and said, you know, social distancing, is it working? And these parents are going to be stopped coming. But it's atmosphere. And I'm, I'm, I'm fed up watching Premier League games, obviously, without atmosphere. I can't get into it. Even the Derby, OK, Sky and BT, and they're all trying their best, their very, very best to put a crowd in there. And sometimes you can't forget it when a goal goes in. But it's still not the same. You love to see those plays. And, uh, and no disrespect to Everton or Villa, but I've said this before. Villa, a point off relegation last year, and Everton struggling. Second and now we've got first and second. Is this because of the crowds? A, a lot of people are saying this now. Because the likes of Liverpool, your Man United, your Arsenal's, your Man City's, the, the big guns, if you like, you know, not against you, Everton, because you're top of the league. But I'm sure you'll be nodding your heads as well. Some fans get on the players' backs and they put the players off. Now, you can see this straight away. Uh, our team can be nearly relegated next last season and then come up there and then towards the top and beat Liverpool 7-2 as well. Is it, what's affecting, what is it? You, th you think a lot of players are, um, don't really perform unless there's a crowd, maybe? Well, that's, that, yeah. yeah, that's my opinion right away and I, and I do believe, I'd love to ask the players that, I really would. How do you feel with no crowds? Has anyone asked them the, the question? Would you prefer a crowd? I'm sure they all prefer a crowd. But the likes of the, the villa, they'd be going, do you know what, this is brilliant, no booing, no people telling me to get off the pitch yeah. and yeah, I can relax and play my own football. Could there be a change in the way of the way the leagues are going to go, even the cup games, especially with no fans, you know, the teams that you would expect to be the top of the table already and not at the top of the table, not just in the Premier League but in other leagues as well, you know. Is, it, is there a chain in the tide, as they say? Well, I don't know, but can the clubs afford it if there's no spectators in there, you know, because we've got a lot. These are all clubs, that's all they rely on, isn't it? The, um... Do you know what I'm happy with, Dave? Well, I just have to stop it, because we're on this audacity, it's a new thing for us, because we've got some new gear. 
And I made up because I didn't have to look at me watching. I just looked there and I thought, hang on, we've got an hour show here tonight. How long have we done? But there's a timer on there now. <laughs> yeah, so Wayne, I, well, I still got a look there, but you still haven't got me that clock that you promised me. So Wayne, come on, done your kiss, the perfect, absolutely mwah, fantastic. DXDL Sports, and we're really going ahead with it. But it's great to know that we're recording, and there's a little clock, and tells me just how long we've been on it. Anyway, Paul, we've been, it, it's, it's great to be with KCC Live, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's nice to have another opening to our channel. Um, it's nice to bring grassroots football together. But if, if you've got any stories that you'd love to hear from, we're not too sure whether there's going to be any music on this evening's show, but that's up to Dan. Dan is our um, producer and editor. Um, he'll be on the show soon talking about how we've done, what we're doing. And I no doubt we're going to be getting scripts, but he's like, why do I need to give you two scripts? You just don't shut up, so it's pointless me yeah. giving you scripts. It's all about grassroots football. It's all about bringing people together. And that's what Don't Cross the Line's been doing since 2003. I've got some great stories, haven't we? As well. Great stories. Where do you want me to start? One? Remember the, do you remember this? Just get this from out my bag. Do you remember that, Mal? Well, I do. I actually do. Act. And the old logo as well. Look at this. 2003 we started, and there's the two teams that have been with us since 2003. What a programme that is. Uh, and that's the old logo, we still got that. I think we've got some badges with that on as yeah, well, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we we've that, changed yeah. the logo a few times, like every good business does, and every good community programme does. We've done that, and do you know what? I do remember, and I do remember these solicitors and mortgage companies going back. Team, that's 2004, this, isn't it? Yeah. With the team, this is that form where we played um, Radio City Slickers. Radio City Slickers. This was great with Peter McDowell. He's, yeah. he's now he's now with the um, Liverpool Football Club. He's now the on the, the tally. Yeah, the tally. Yeah, the pitch side announcer as well. Yeah. Well, Peter, absolutely brilliant. He's played for us a couple of times. He's always given me stick as well. When you're going to have a go, I'm not getting involved in that, you know. And especially he didn't want to get involved in this one because if I remember right, Ricky Hatton and Paul Smith. Oh yeah. They played in this, didn't they? And what a what a name. What, what I mean, no one was expecting Ricky Atten of all people to turn up. Do you know what? I tell you, funny. Ricky Atten was brilliant. No one had a camera. No one had the pictures. And he done a move. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Someone went in a little bit too hard on him with a tackle, and I oh, can't remember who it was. Dave Whelan it was the ex. Um, no, it wasn't Dave Whelan. Was he was on their side. Oh, Dave was the Wigan athletic manager. Yeah. Oh, he was mad. Honestly, guys, what he should have seen the challenges. Even his own team, Paul Smith. And Ricky Hatt was saying, Dave, calm down with you, mate. It's a charity game. He didn't see it as a charity game. He kept saying, I want to win this anyway. Do you yeah. remember him? Yeah. And he was really, really, wow, oh, this is football. Anyone who knows Dave Whelan, he was a real character. Yeah. He was great with Wigan Athletic. Won the FA Cup with him as well. And we really started this business in a little in a, a corner of a shop. That's how he started his business. Did he? Yeah, that's how, we, that's how he started himself off. A little corner and some... Department so and, and his son owns Wigan Athletic now, doesn't well, he? So he's in the process of selling it. Well, well yeah. at the moment he still owes it. Yeah, yeah. But the, the move was Ricky Hatton. When someone went in with the challenge, oh, yeah. Ricky turned, laughed, picked him up by the shirt and done this. And it was you can't see it on Audacity, sorry, this is but what he done, he, he, he pretended to go, I'm gonna punch you. Yeah. And it was honestly the whole team, the crowd, every one of us. Though so well, it was absolutely hilarious. It's a pity we didn't have a camera in it. Oh, that was a gone worldwide. And the news in the world was out that day. That did go, well, look what Ricky Atten done to some poor fellow who was in the charity game. But it was great. The bands right the way through. And another story with Ricky Hatton as well at the end of the game. Oh, no, it was half time. Half time it was, yeah. All the kids were queuing up and they were getting these hot dogs. And there was a massive queue. And Ricky said, yeah, they're all going, can I have an autograph? So they were queuing up there and Ricky went into the front of the queue and they were all at the hot dogs and he started to sign his autographs and they were all going to the back of the queue yet again. So Ricky's going, looking at me and I went, Ricky, I said, you're signing those autographs twice there. He went, you know what? He said, they're only kids. He said, leave them alone. And these kids were getting loads and loads of autographs. And they all thought, didn't they? Oh, we can Ricky out there if he stands again. And he was just playing along with it. Ricky was... Outstanding, same as Paul Smith, Paul Dalgleish, Dave Whelan, who else? Oh, we had a few, didn't we? Oh, we had a few, we just can't remember them all. Obviously the programme tells you whatever, you can't buy them. Yeah. But you look at what, these. what exactly, speaking of that, but what exactly did you do that to man? 
What did I do? Yeah, what did you do to volunteer? I was managing that day, was I not? Yeah, and where was I? Where were you, Bob? Remind me. <laughs> I was in the, the turnstile, man. Oh, I, no. I was the one who was letting the folks in to watch the game, right? What do you mean, let them in? Just put a jar. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you, no wonder they come on, let them in. Oh, wait. Um, well, you know, especially the young kids, yeah, you had to let them in, didn't you? You know, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't charge the young kids, but the parents, yeah, they, they paid all the other tickets to get in. But that was great. And you were on the chain style, so we the chain style, yeah, so I didn't even see the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. Because why is that? Why is hang that? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, did I not bring you a half time, a hot dog and a cup of tea? Yeah, but I wasn't actually sitting on the chair. I'd, I'd actually close the chair stand by then. I was sitting just inside the ground so that you could see me, so that you could pass me my hot dog and my cup of tea. Have you ever thought maybe it didn't want to see you, Paul? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But anyway, no, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, well, was there you go. Did you get to see any of the game? I did the second half, yeah. So you would have missed the movement there from Ricky, wouldn't you? Yeah, I say I heard the, I heard the cheer. <laughs> I, was I, was the one, I thought it was a goal. But oh. that, was, but yeah. oh, that was in 2004. We can't thank the people enough there. And we got, it was a challenge, a charity challenge. So from Radio City, Snickers FC, but it's just Don't Cross the Line, Campaigners FC. And do you know what? We played um, two games because we, we had the Dream Team. Anyone who saw uh, or knows about the Dream Team, it was a Sky Sports. No, Sky, Sky One. Sky One, fantasy programme, where the Dream Team were all these players who represent the Premier League and they played the likes of Everton, Manchester City, Millwall were in there, so well, they got in there because they were, it was just because they used the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, that was fantastic. We played them as well and we played them, where did we play them, Paul? At Halton Stadium. Yes, and do you know what, it was brilliant. And we've got to thank the staff from Holton Stadium as well there because well, if you remember like we were there the night before because we had to because witness were playing St. Helens the night before and we were uh, invited down. Yeah. We went down the cold trophy because the guys were staying in the temperature. Yeah, see the layouts, we're in the box. And then obviously must have been their press officer said, Right, okay, you need to come down now, we're going on at half time. Okay, half time comes, say something to the pitch, everyone's waving to the crowd, everyone's cheering. I forget who it was, one or two players went to the far side of the pitch to sign autographs for the fans on the other side to these rugby fans who probably, they might have watched it, I don't know, but, and then as soon as half time was over, trying to get them off the other side to get off before the game, it was like, I don't know, I don't know how we've done it, but we managed to, we managed to get them over, to, but it was great, it was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On the pitch as well there. Uh, Trying to get all the fans to come to the game yeah. the next day, and it was it was okay, wasn't it? It was yeah. good to hear. We had Chris Boy who refereed that on that day, yeah. and uh, Chris always has a goal at me because I say, well, it was a draw, wasn't it? We didn't. I got. Did we win against the Dream Team? We did, didn't we? We beat the Dream Team. No, we drew because it went to a penalty shootout. <coughs> right, we drew, so we're undefeated anyway. Yeah. And we're throwing the goal at our team. Don't let anyone see this country. Um, it's a program that's on after match of the day. I don't know what it's going on. I think it is going. I'm sure it's still carrying on with Paul Cooper, Daisy Cooper as well. The top stars and they're all a family, aren't they? And we've thrown a goal and out to them to play them in a friendly when things get a little bit back to normal because they're undefeated. They played one and we're undefeated. So what a game that could be. And we know RDSTL celebrities eleven. We're just too good, aren't we, Paul? That's it's simple as that. No, it's just. I mean, who, who do we leave out this time? You. Well, if you, yeah, but listen, I'm, I'm the kit man. If you remember, I yeah, I'm, I'm the, the kit man. Do you know what the kit man? It was funny with him, you know. He's the kit man. He dropped the bag and jumped on with the dream team halfway through. I'm going. What's he doing on that pitch over there? He's the kit man. He said, "I couldn't resist. I had to have a little kick around." Yeah. <laughs> Well, forget you who, forget, forget, there, yeah, I forget who the centre that half was that day and he said to me, which way are you going? I said, I'm going on the wing. I said, just send that ball over the top. Okay. And he did. And it was great. Of course, it, no problem. Right on to the old foot. Went past them. As soon as I went past them, I was on the floor. You slipped? No, I didn't slip, man. What did you do? I was in the area. I, I was Were brought, you saying Chris should give you the penalty? Yeah, I was brought down. And Chris, Chris, great guy. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing <laughs> against him. Good. But, <laughs> right? But he's not here to defend himself now, is it? He, 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 he booked me for diving. Did he? Yeah, yeah, you got a booking, didn't you? Yeah, he booked me for diving. I thought, should I argue? I thought, no, because I don't want another, another card. See, Chris, you picked on us, you know. But we're still undefeated. I know, yeah, still undefeated. So there you yeah. go, we're looking for celebrity teams. 
to take us ourselves on, not ourselves, we're going to play, but I'm <laughs> celebrities in there. So watch out for us, and I'm sure there'll be all kinds. Mal, can I play for your team? We do get inundated. But I assure you, we do get some extra professionals who are regulars. Peter McDowell, hopefully, Peter, he's played in the two games, he'll come again and play in the day as well. I don't know whether Peter's keeping himself fit at the moment because he'll be sitting in the studio there just throwing his voice out, won't he? Well, yeah, but he also, he's, when I, well, well, obviously there's no, there wasn't really a pre-season for LFC, so he usually no, got, he's usually right. up and around, Peter. You always see him on the bike when they're on tour, um, trying, to, trying to train with them, like, but hopefully he's keeping himself fit. Well, I think Jürgen's probably keeping him fit, fit down at the academy. So, um, as well as Jürgen team, yeah. he's, we seem to be running away with our players now, don't we? It's coming down with injury and... You know, the derby, we've got to mention the derby. Everyone's probably waiting for us to mention the derby, but um, we won't go too, too deep into detail because at the end of the day, it's probably history now. We're just seeing on social media. Well, we're seeing every day on social media. There's loads of banter going on there, but, you know, let's hope that Virgil um, gets better as soon as possible. Eh? And we yeah. see all the good messages coming up. There's a lot of Evertonians as well passing on their uh, messages to get well soon as well because... What a player to miss out in the Premier League. We're getting so many injuries. Ah, let's just hope we can cover Listen, it. These young lads have got to step up now in training. Well, team mate, why shouldn't they? You know, that's what they're there for. And I'm sure they can help out Jürgen. And let's just hope we can knock Everton off the perch in the next few games. Let's yeah. hope we can. Because I thought Liverpool did turn it on. I, I thought they were really, really good. Played well. Um, I don't know whether 2 2 was a fair result, in my opinion. Well, both teams have. Well, well, it can't be a fair yeah. result, can it? Cause well, the well, at the time, the Evertonians classed that as two points dropped, wouldn't you? Well, you would have, because you're at home. Well, you would have classed it as two yeah, points dropped, wouldn't you? We won't go into detail no, about no, uh, no, Mane that's, as well. That's, that's gone now. But well done to all the Evertonians who I've met on the, um, the Sunday in Grassroots Football who would just turn around and say, you know, it, it's about time it went our way. And they turn around and say, yes, blatant sending off and. It was a goal. Yeah, yeah. You know, they admitted it, they stood there, so there you go. That's I suppose that's Mersey side coming together. And we've done a show there, didn't we, saying um would they all have capes on because Batman's in town. <laughs> oh yeah. Um I don't think they all have capes on, did we? No, does it? Just watch it don't drop your phone there, but oh, anyone yeah. wants to know what on that list of things, yeah. It just broke his phone. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was, it was um It was funny, especially like Seeing Batman actually going past Everton's ground, especially if he if he didn't know, uh, uh, it actually made it the actual f the the year actually on the banner was the last time Everton won a trophy. And what year was that, Paul? Nineteen ninety five. I just said don't rub it in. We'll have to start that one. <laughs> 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 no, but um, and if anyone's didn't know what happened, there do, was do a character run down in a Batman suit yeah. with a little banner on him, and it took that out and put it over the fence, 1995. So there you go, the Cape Crusader did come there, but we got a point each, and let's move on to the next game, no doubt. Yeah. Anyway, we talk about our fantastic games, and um, obviously we do need to kit man, don't we? And I know Colin, Colin Fulton will be like that, I'll be the kit man. <laughs> but I can have five minute game on there as well, I know Colin. But we, we're looking forward to our celebrities, and hopefully we'll have a game. Um, soon, but we keep it informed, and uh, we want to go all matters. Hopefully, unbeaten if we possibly so where can. Do, well, where are we up to on um, the campaign, then, man? What are we up to? Where are we up to now? On the campaign, well, the campaign's going through the roof, isn't it? Because yeah, we're doing our respect program. Yeah, right. We're just waiting on the PGM or well to come back and confirm that we're um, going ahead with the respect awareness weekend. On I think I put it in for. June, I think you said that. Uh, April, didn't oh, you? Okay. You said June this morning on that, um, on that... I had a Zoom call this morning. I've said the wrong date. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like myself. It's not June. Oh, no. April. Well, they'll put that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because I've got that much going on now. Well, what about me jogging? Paul does know. athletics. Now, he said to me, listen, man, you've got to run before you can walk. No, walk, no, walk before you can run a set. Didn't what did I just say, Danny? Do the way down. Did I? Yeah. So walk before you can run. Yeah. 17 years, 17 years of walking with Don't Cross the Line. Yeah. And now I'm running. With Don't Cross and I don't mean I'm just running now in the street. What I'm doing, I'm doing an early morning jog and a night jog. But you did tell me, didn't you? You said you must walk, otherwise you do yourself in. But I feel good, I feel great. And, well, it's Tuesday evening and I feel super, super fit. What more could you say, Paul? You haven't started yet and you're the... Um, 
Do the automatic man. Ah, yeah, but I don't need to stand on that. I mind all up there. Right. As I'm mainly the advisor. I'll advise. I've, well, I stopped. I haven't trained myself personally for about two months. Why? Why? Just that things on me, just different things. Just. But you kept the, the weight off. I put weight on. No, well, I wouldn't yeah. say I've put, kept the weight off. I, I reckon I'm overweight. Do you? Well, I, I'm used to, my, my training and racing weight has always been no more than 13 stone, 14 stone, 10. But I don't, I don't look it. Who hey, all the pies then, Paul? Not me, but I saw the end on cakes. Oh, <laughs> <who's dead? laughs> oh yeah, all the cakes eat, yeah, the ones are picking the grown up. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go round after you as well and get my shovel. Yeah. And there we go, here we go, Paul's in again, the rod's in again. Yeah. Hansel and Gretel, dear me, pick the crumbs up after you, please. Yeah. And the birds all left them. We've got no yeah, birds. You better here. keep off the grass, let's pick up the crumbs. <laughs> pick up the crumbs time. Anyway, what else have we got? We've got, um, what's this you tell me about? One, uh, obviously, Ellesmere, Port and Ainsdale, we've got our pitches there, inclusive pitches, and um, you've got a great team that's coming on board. Yeah, yeah, Sophie Cullen and Matthew Richards, yeah, doing well, behind the scenes, doing really well. Um, well tell our, our listeners and our viewers exactly what it's all about. Well, but it's you can't really class it as disability anymore because it's it's that's class that's like a discrimination. It's inclusion is the new word on the on the road, and basically we're including a lot of not just young people but older generations as well in these. Hope hope to hopefully we're in the process of trying to set a tournament up for Christmas, the the the, the Christmas Cup, the DXL Christmas Cup. And, and that's going to be a tournament for inclusion, yes. and it's also going to be, uh, maybe we're looking at... Maybe but we're looking at two days, Mark, to be honest. We're looking okay. at, um, roughly at the moment, we've pencilled the first weekend in December. So we're looking at maybe the Saturday as your inclusion side of it for your younger generation, um, and then the Sunday is the older generation on the inclusion side. Hopefully, as you say, post Hopefully we can we can put this on um, because of this COVID situation. But if it means only having local teams for this tournament, well, well be it. We'll only have local teams. But the plan is to have teams from outside the borough. Um, at the moment, we've got we've just well was it last night? Last night actually, yeah. Um, MK Dons Football League Club have been in touch with Sophie, and. They want to get involved. They they really they really up for it. They they really want to pr promote it down where they are, um, not just through their club or academy, but also through like a school program of some sort. So it'd be great to be great. That'd be also be nice if we could go down and actually see these guys and have a chat to them face to face. I know it's okay sending emails every five minutes and things like that, but it'd be nice to put a name to a face. Mm -hmm. um, either myself go down with yourself. Um, or even yourself and my team, Matthew and um, Sophie. But yeah, no, it's looking, it's coming on. And also, um, we're designing a website, aren't we? Uh, yeah, the yeah. new website, and um, we're getting that work on there as well. So if it's under construction, you're trying to get onto the website, then we apologise. But Sean, uh, is, uh, North Web Design, is doing an app. So you haven't seen it yet, Paul. Yeah. And I don't want you to see it until it's all up and running. Yeah, no, because, fine, yeah. But I've seen it, I've had sneak previews, and do you know what? Love it, absolutely love it. And I'm sorry I didn't take notice to Paul from Grassroots Football UK, who's been asking me to, you know, is his designer come on there and, and do that. A few years ago, I should have done that, but you know, your, your life's mapped out, they say. And I've decided to go with Sean. And when he gave me this preview and the way he talks, wow, it's going to be a big hit. It's going to be what we've been missing. Well, what we've got, well, I mean, we've been talking, have we, behind the scenes um, about. Like you say, merchandise. Mm -hmm. um, You've got something there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah um, hopefully the, the camera can pick it up there. The camera will definitely pick that up. Let's have a little yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, there we go. These respect water bottles. Yeah. Now, surely we could put these out for referees. Oh, yeah. Supporters. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's got, your name, it's got your name on the top so, so that they don't lose it. Oh, is this? All oh, right, okay. So that's where they put the name. Yeah. Or the, or the club name if it's a club. Or the kids as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they look uh, rather good. Um, do you have a price on these yet or we just. Um, not at the moment, no. We'll just, we, let's hopefully we get some orders in and uh, get a reasonable amount of orders. We'll do them at a reasonable price. 
There you go, respect water bottles. What more could you say? Show your support to Don't Cross the Line and our referees as well. Um, obviously, you can't see them on the um, the audio, but you can see them if you tune in to DXTL TV from the touch lines. There you go. Um, you don't have to drink too much, and they are solid. I like them. And I suppose that's the end thing now as well, isn't it? You know, we need to get kids all using that with your name on there so you don't get mixed up because of COVID-19. Brilliant, Paul. Well done. Um, merchandise for Tottenham Hotspur. We're doing the DXTL Sports. And also, we well, we should because you're waiting your ID card as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll get them done. I'll, I'll get them up and running, I promise. But the ID cards as well for Safeguard, I think they're a must as well for all managers. Yeah, I think the ID cards... Instead of just having it in your wallet, I think we, I think personally, we'd be better off putting them on a lanyard. Yeah. We'll so we supply yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, so when you go up and down the venues, whenever you are, someone can pull you up and go, oh, oh yeah, all right, Paul, well, yeah, or oh, I'm all over the level. Yeah, yeah. So you're not just it's not just Joe Bloggs walking around, um, looking at say matches or making notes if people are wondering what's going well, on. Well, a couple of years ago, the whole of Quarry Green they took um, um, IT cards off the plastic cards with the lanyards and they were to treat it was absolutely fantastic what I saw of them wearing them I just thought brilliant and I think every manager every not every parent anyone who wants the ID cards get in touch with us as well as the as well as these is it mal at don't text the line dot com we should hopefully have something on the website I think you just reminded me now so I'll see Sean see yeah. what we can build on there as well for the likes of merchandise the likes of what we're doing the likes of everything that we can because we want your support we need your support and we need you to support the referees who are out and about week in week out refereeing out there some say you get paid but come on there's a lot out there you don't yeah. get paid for verbal abuse or no, no, no. but as i say go back to the website um with it, obviously when it is up and running um a lot better and a lot sharper um there'll be a section on it for inclusion hopefully yes um so obviously myself and photograph will be on it um, and my team um, we've done a nice photo shoot. Oh, we did. Uh, we had a laugh for doing that, didn't we? Yeah, we had a laugh for some um, But um, no, it's all sort of. them all by the green screen. Now they don't realise what you can put in the background there, so it's out for me. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, what I'd say, the, this, like to the inclusion side of it on the website, teams can look onto that now it's a, and look for a certain area that they want to look at, whether it's gallery inclusion or what's on or respect. What, respect yeah now as you say we're open to pull over in a well it's in a process isn't it at the moment these coaching clinics Little, coaching clinics yeah. yeah and already we're talking about um probably mini kickers starting on there and get the coaching clinics yeah, on yeah, yeah. that's all on there um there's loads honestly there's loads that we're doing that don't cross the line and it's you know grassroots inclusion yeah. this is what it's going to be as well yeah. um we're really looking forward to really getting a good start and Paul coming back on the team with uh, Sophie and Matt as well and Dan, our producer, who's going to be watching a very, very close eye over us because KCC Live 99.8 FM. Uh, uh, do you know, we're looking hopefully for a couple of shows at the weekends as well, aren't we? Yeah, maybe, even if it's even if it was a recap programme, just, you just, yeah, just in case you missed the Tuesday. Yeah, hopefully you don't miss the Tuesday, right? But, yeah. no, definitely don't. Who's on before us, by the way? I think it's Redcast or something. The guy Red. that does the Redcast. I think he's on, I think the way it's done. Six or seven. Six or seven, and then it's the DXTL crew from um, seven to eight. That's us. That's us. So tune in tonight, please. Seven to eight. DXTL podcast. 99.8 FM. There you go, see, he's been saying it all the time, he knows it, see, <laughs> just wait for me. Only because it's on your forehead, man. Oh, that's really much. 99.8 FM, I love it. Now, we've got to get our radio voices on. We've got our digital voices on. Well, I think, it, is it, it's either next week or, or after half term, isn't um, Don't Cross making an appearance? He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's itching, isn't he? He's itching to come in on the show or even on the touchlines, even. He is. He is. And the music. Because we don't know what. Dan, what are you doing to us? When are we putting the music on? Because I want to be that DJ, not looking in and going, right, right, folks, we're having so and so on. Yeah. We, we need some music on, don't we, in between? Yeah. So he's going to give us a script, he's going to tell us when the break's coming. So we know, um, not too sure how we're going to do it on DSTL TV from the touchlines, really. Yeah. But he is, 
he isn't sad that you can say, yeah. <laughs> <Don't lost. laughs> He's lost, but we'll have some nice music. What are you putting on there, Paul? <laughs> He's definitely lost. Anyway, we've got weekend games coming up again, haven't we? We've got it. Well, I think they're playing them every night in the hubs, aren't they? The friendlies, the training. But as I say, I'll have to go down more. I haven't actually got had the, had the chance to really to go. The reason I haven't been down is because I didn't want to get turned away at all because I haven't got a child playing. No, it, that's exactly right. But we've got to look at the young referees as well because a lot of their parents don't turn up as well. So we're representing the likes of themselves and obviously make sure that they're getting treated okay because if the committees can't make it, then we're on the touch lines and we can have a little chat to them. And me being a mentor towards the referees as well, it, that's working a treat. And the referees are, are loving it, but as we said before, some people give them stick because they're out there in the penny. Well, you know, you don't get paid for that. You, you, you shouldn't do. So if you're on the touch lines, any time whatsoever, just give encouragement, not just to the kids on the football pitch, to the referees as well. Because without the referee, your, ch your child can't play football or any sport. And there is no game. So this is what we're trying to... Well, we've been doing that since 2003, publicising that. But it's working better, it's getting better. OK, there's only one parent per child or one guardian. If, let's just hope that gets better. We're on lockdown here. We're barred from Wales. I was saying that yesterday. Barred, aren't we? Yeah. Dear and me, what's happening here? We can't get to Wales. Anyone who's got a caravan? Anyone who wants to go to Snowdonia? Yeah. No well, unless it's unless it's work related, I think they can get round if it's work related. Well, yeah, I'm climbing the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to go and see someone there, you know, wants a job in Snowdonia. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. What are we on? What are we on now? We've been talking grassroots football and we want, I'll tell you what, people out there, if you've got any stories to tell us, yeah. if you want anything to do with what your child's up to, how, how they're feeling in the football team, uh, young referees, we want your stories, get them into us so we can start reading them out. Maladontextaline.com, add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. Or even any birthday requests? Special requests, special requests, anything, yeah. Yeah, because you can't get out and about now, the family bubble or something like that, isn't it? And you can't. So you can tune in to KCC 99.8 Live. We'll start giving you mentions. We'll also do that on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday because we have our 7 o'clock show, 7 to 8. But things will be changing over the next week, 